Let's begin with step one, ensuring your financial data and your tax data can be fully reconciled. This is essential. With the availability and automatic exchange of information via country-by-country country reporting, companies need to be extremely careful in selecting reported data. When selecting data to be reported, start by running financial data scenarios to identify any mismatches between reported profit, tax and people in a jurisdiction. This is challenging, especially when different accounting principles apply to different countries. So what can be done to help? Using software to store transactional level data for each operational jurisdiction is a start, but before using any software, you need to make an initial inspection of the country level data. Then it can be used to run scenarios or ratio analyses to assess the impact of transfer pricing policies, tax rulings, or other intercompany or third party arrangements. Software limits the room for error, it increases efficiency in identifying outliers and helps in developing strategies to mitigate their associated risks. If tax authorities find any outliers from the data, being unprepared to answer any questions raised may cause a dispute. This could mean not only heavy costs, but a time and reputational burden for your company. Take a look at Caterpillar, which shifted 85% of its US-based income to Switzerland, keeping its core operations at home while artificially moving the spare parts business to Geneva. Of its over 118,000 employees worldwide, nearly half work in the United States, while less than half of 1% work in Switzerland. Of its 125 manufacturing facilities, 54 are in the United States, with none in Switzerland. In 2012, Caterpillar spent $2 billion on research and development, 80% in the United States, and less than 10% in Switzerland. You can find out how well this and Caterpillar's lack of corporate transparency worked out for the company. It would Hands have to be believed. Would any public. rational company believe they're getting a return, handing over 80 for Oh, if, if in fact they were being relieved of all the risk associated with that were business, if they were relieved of the capital They're operating the company. They business. continue to operate the company in Illinois. It's the same operations. No people have shifted. 5,000 people, tw a dozen people have to shift. 5,000 people work for Caterpillar. A less than 100 people work in parts in Switzerland. Nothing changes. Maybe a 12, pe maybe 12 people move. Right. But it's I'm not just, all, yeah. I'm just asking you, I'm asking you for an honest answer. Was there, is there any rational company that would give up 85% of ongoing profits in a business that has been highly profitable, put together over 70 years? Highly profitable companies. Is there any way that this would be sold, given away, no consideration? 85% of the profits on the ongoing parts business handed over. Yes, I, I, the answer is yes, under the economic circumstances which Caterpillar accepted. This could have been predicted and possibly avoided by running projections such as FTE versus OP in group entities. Even if you don't do your own analyses, the tax authorities will do them for you, with country-by-country -country reporting data or with information from leaks or whistleblowers. So, to avoid disputes, be proactive and synchronize your financial and tax data. To review, have you made a careful selection of data to be reported in local country and global filings? Have you run financial ratio analyses to identify key areas of risk? And are you aware of the mismatches that will appear in the CBC report compared to local tax returns? If you've answered no to one or more of these questions, but want to avoid the fate of Caterpillar, consider these as part of your step-by-step -step plan.